What is an epic in Jira? If only I got paid one cent for every time people ask me this question, I could probably buy myself now, well, with the current inflation, probably a hot dog. But seriously, we get it all the time. People are asking us what an epic is, how to use it, where do I um, combine this together with my other issue types in Jira. So this is why we are going to be talking about this today, because I feel like there is a lot of information regarding the epics flying around the web, and not all of them are great, at least according to me. This video is part of our effort to deliver high-quality learning materials for Jira, Confluence, Jira and Confluence apps. Uh, and if you want to support this, then consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, you can also always reach out to us for paid services that we do offer in all of those areas. And now back to the epics. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of the definitions of an epic that you can find on the web, actually on the Atlassian website itself. So let's take a look at this one. An epic captures a large body of work performance-related work, for example, in, re in a release, it is essentially a large user story that can be broken down into a number of smaller stories. Now, of course, I can't say that this definition is wrong. It's basically okay, but at the same time, I feel like that capturing an epic inside uh, some boundaries is not the greatest of choices. Now, let me read to you another definition of an epic that also comes from an Atlassian website. And I think the second one is a lot better. So, an epic represents high-level initiatives or bigger pieces of work in Jira. For software teams, an epic may represent a new feature they are developing. For IT teams or service teams, epics may represent a major service change or upgrade. Right? And again, we could give more examples for different teams. But I think this definition is a lot better because it actually points to the fact that EPIC, in general, is just something that represent, represents a larger piece of work. Right? And this is what I want you to stick to. Right? So don't think of an EPIC like, okay, EPIC is part of the Agile um, manifesto, so to say, right? So if you're working in an agile way, epics will come to you naturally. And then you're searching for a proper use of an epic inside this methodology. But our experience is that most of the people do not work purely agile. And even if they do work agile, it's not 100% according to the so-called agile rules, so to say, right? <clears throat> and from my perspective, this is absolutely okay because you should be working in a way that makes sense for your products, your services, your company, and your environment, right? So take the best out of any methodologies that you want. And, you know, in my opinion, you can combine it together as long as you get the best result as a product in the end. Um, therefore, using an epic in a way that is defined in the Agile Manifesto, for example, um, it, it, well, not maybe manifesto, but agile methodology doesn't have to be the best approach for you because maybe you're working hybrid. And in a hybrid approach, your epic maybe has to be slightly different. So what I prefer to focus on when we are talking about epics is that epic is a special issue type in Jira. And that's all you need to know. That's all you need to focus on. Epic is a special issue type in Jira. So if you, if you look at Jira issue types, you have basically three levels of issue types. There is an Epic at the top, so that's the biggest one. Then you have normal standard issue types. This will be like a task, a user story, a bug, and so on. And you can create a custom ones if you want to, of course. And then you have subtasks that are attached to these standard issue types, right? So that's basically three levels. And now, because Epic is at the top, you should treat the Epics as something that represents your large piece of work. Now, and that's why I like the second definition that I've read to you. Now, does it mean that there is nothing above the Epic and nothing can be above the Epic? No, of course not. So there are, there are tools like, for example, Big Picture, that allow you to extend this hierarchy to have, well, unrestricted number of levels, really, right? So if you want to have something above the epic, like an 
initiative or a theme or whatever, really, then with additional tools, it's absolutely doable. Even without those tools, just using simply Jira, it's doable as well. But then uh, you have to use Jira linking that, um, if explained properly to people, will be probably understood, but doesn't have a best visual representation in Jira, so to say. All right, let's go back to the screen over here. So let's talk more about epics and how they are special in Jira. So, of course, when I'm talking about epics, I mean this icon. So that's the default icon for an epic issue type. And most of you, uh, even those that just nimbled the Jira, you will probably recognize this, right? So this is what an epic is in Jira. And now, how epic is special? How is it special? So there are several things that are connected to an, to an epic as, a, as an issue type in Jira that um, do, uh, are not represented on the level of other issue types. So the first thing I want to say over here is that Epic has some special fields that other issue types don't have. So if you open an Epic here as, um, uh, as, a, as an issue, really, in Jira, you will see that Epic has... Um, actually, it might have been easier if I would open an, an edit screen, but uh, I, I think this one will serve as well. So the, the two special fields I'm talking about are Epic name that you can see over here, and it says non-personal cost, just like the epic summary that is visible over here. So what is an epic name? Epic name is a special field that very often you just copy the epic summary and epic name and they look together as the same. Um, they have the same string, so to say. Um, but um, epic name is connected with the second special field that epics have, and this is epic link. So what is an epic link? Epic link allows you to attach other issue types, not epics, but something below the epic, so standard issue types, to an epic, right? So you create a hierarchy thanks to the epic link. Now, you can say, okay, but I can create hierarchy with normal issue uh, linking in Jira. Um, let me show you what I mean, right? So this section, child issues, this is a section that comes from epic link. So whatever is attached over here to my non-personal costs epic is connected to this epic through the epic link field. And I could add more issues over here just by pressing the plus button. And then you can see here that I can choose a story, a bug, or a cost even over here, which actually for this example makes sense. I hijacked, hi hijacked some, uh, some of the Yaros project. That doesn't matter. So, so that's epic link field. Normally, you could also create connections uh, between Jira issues. Let me go to another one, like infrastructure upgrade, for example, over here. doesn't really matter. And you could also link issues here with a Jira link system. And you can say here, okay, um, it is uh, related to, relates to, or there are some special links that we have on our instance as well, which you might not have, like is a child of, is a parent of, right? So you could theoretically create a hierarchy like this using the links, but then it doesn't, uh, well, it shows here as, a, as issues linked by a specific type of a link, but it doesn't have any special meaning in other parts of Jira, which Epic Link does. And I'll be showing this to you in a moment, okay? So that, that's what I mean uh, by Epic Links and uh, child issues that an Epic can have. Use the Epic Link to connect Epic to uh, its child issues, and then they create a hierarchy. Now, uh, so, so these, these are the two fields, Epic Name and Epic uh, Link. Uh, and I told you that Epic Name is connected to Epic Link because if you uh, then look uh, on these child issues over here, let's, uh, it's best to do it on the board. So let's go to the backlog. You will see that those, those issues over here has a, have a label now which uh, shows which Epic they are connected to, right? So this user story, as developer I can blah, 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 is connected to developer Epic, okay? This one is connected to user Epic and this one as well. So this is where the epic name comes into play. It is shown here as this label. So if you want to make it shorter so that the label is not super long, you can, uh, and then you ha can have a separate string for an epic summary, so to say. So sometimes it's confusing, but uh, for those of you that know a little bit more about Jira, you will know that every issue has a summary, which is basically an issue name, and then epic has a second name which actually goes to the label. That's basically it's super simple, okay? Doesn't really matter too much. What else is special about Epic? So if you try to create a standard issue uh, 
type, you will probably go to over here to standard create button at the top. And over here, of course, you can also switch to create an epic. A new screen will load. You have this epic name over here as an additional field that is mandatory to have, actually, right? So this is one of the ways of creating an epic. But epics can also be created in other ways. So, for example, when you're on the board that we're looking at right now, there is a special section for epics, right? So they get special treatment over here. You can see that they are um, having some progress bars over here. You can, for example, uh, create a new epic from this level as well. If you expand an epic, you can create issues in an epic. So they will be automatically linked to this epic through the epic link field. So as you can see, special treatment for epics. Another place that you will find special treatment for epics are roadmaps. So if you go to roadmaps again, you will, I, I have a bunch of epics over here. You can see that I can easily create child issue under those epics. Again, you have some progress bars, right? Uh, you have filters regarding the epics. So they are like a separate category in Jira that are treated in a certain way in certain places of Jira. So it's always good to think um, how the epic can be used in Jira so that you can reap all of those benefits and get the most out of this beautiful, really, issue type. But that's still not all. There is more. So, for example, if you go to reports, there are dedicated reports that treat the epics. Epic report, epic burndown, right? So, again, a special treatment. What else is um, special surrounding the epics? For example, if you are using additional Jira apps, they can treat epics in a special way as well. And that very often happens. So, for example, in big picture, epics are um, similarly to Jira used to define the hierarchy. And if you use the epics in a certain way, you will be able to easily place them as parents on the Gantt chart, for example, even though they are kind of dedicated to the Agile approach. Doesn't matter, right? You can put them on the Gantt, use them as parents, have children below them, and um, make it look beautiful. So all in all, what I'm trying to say throughout this video is I want you to understand what an epic is. Epic is just an additional issue type in Jira that gets some special treatment in some places. And that is really what's important. Because other than that, you can use epic in whatever fashion you wish. It, it, it's absolutely okay to use it according to the definition that it's like a large piece of work, maybe spanning, spanning across multiple sprints, and then use it that way. But if you, what, what if you don't work with sprints? What if you don't work with Agile at all? What if you're pure waterfall? Does it mean that epics are not for you? No, it does not. Epics just represent a larger piece of work. So if you have something that you want to group your tasks, user stories into, Epic is a very good candidate, and it will probably always be. Um, and again, I want to emphasize that it doesn't mean that you can't have more levels of hierarchy, because you absolutely can. Jira doesn't support it, but tools like Big Picture Structure, they do. So all you need to do is just reach out to some additional apps in the Jira ecosystem, and you will be perfectly good. If you want to learn more about those apps or in general how to work with Epics, Jira, project management inside the Atlassian ecosystem, then I encourage you to reach out to us. We are experts in this area, really, and we have years of experience working with, with customers all around the world in all different methodologies. And I have to tell you, it's been such a wonderful journey to see how people are using different methodologies and tools to reach a very similar effect in the end. Uh, that's, that's, that always amazes me. So if you want to learn more about this and you want to chat with us about how we can help you um, make your environment awesome for project management or just process management, then all the links you will find in the description. Just give us um, a call, drop us a note, and we will schedule a meeting and talk about how we can help you. This is all in this video. If you've liked this, consider giving this video a like, consider subscribing to the channel, consider dropping a comment just for the algorithm so that other people have it easier finding this content. And I will stop over here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'll be seeing you in one of our next videos. Cheers.